hello everybody, and uh, in this video, here I'm uh, interviewing Gary Mannion, uh, who I've known for a number of years. Can you describe what you do for our viewers? Sure, so I am a non-invasive psychic surgeon. So I have a spirit team of surgeons that work through me who carry out um, the form of healing called psychic surgery. Um, non-invasively though, so we don't cut skin. Uh, I'm also a physical medium. Okay, great. How long have you been doing this work? Oh God, uh, I've been doing the healing, well I've been working for Spirit for 18 years now. Um, I've been doing the healing for 13 years and I've been doing the physical for about six years now. Right, and um, what is physical mediumship? So physical mediumship, um, with mental mediumship, it's where Spirit would give you the energy but you would interpret it, you would act with it. With physical mediumship, Spirit use you as the medium but they direct the energy how they want. So we normally associate that with seances and phenomena. Okay. So what is a seance and how do they work? Um, so there's different types of seance. Um, the type that I predominantly do would be the cabinet seances. So in that I am secured to a chair inside a trance cabinet. Um, and then we get sitters to sit and give energy. Um, and from that any range of phenomena could hopefully be produced. Interesting. Uh, what is a healing seance? With the, so with the healing seance, the way they would differ from a normal seance is we're still taking the energy that we normally build for phenomena, but we're applying it to healing, which tends to allow the healing to be a lot stronger, a lot more effective, um, and a lot more kind of spot on at the time. Okay, cool. Um, what can people expect from a sitting? Oh, uh, we always say expect nothing, so you won't go away disappointed, but you could have anything from um, communication with a loved one, to phenomena such as a trumpet flying around the room, um, all the way through to full materialization, if the energy's right. Um, where do you go during your seances? Um, so, traditionally people thought with trance that when a medium was in trance, their spirit was floating around some cloud somewhere. Um, sadly, that's not the case. What does happen is I go deeper into my subconscious, almost like a sleep state. Um, so I'm aware that time has gone by, but I'm not aware what's happened. Right, so you get lots of rest. Um, no, sadly, you still need to sleep at night. It's quite taxing on the body, sadly. <laughs> okay, how do people prepare for a sitting? Um, so generally we would tell people to try and relax, have an easy day before a sitting, um, try not to get into any arguments or anything with strong emotions, um, light meals, lots of water, um, and just setting the intention to the spirit world that that's what you're going to come together for to try and achieve later. Okay. Um, what is ectoplasm? Ectoplasm is a substance which is produced inside the medium's body. Um, it's an extension of the medium's nervous system. Everybody can produce ectoplasm to some extent, um, though mediums who work with it tend to produce an abundance of it. Um, and spirit will use it to create the mass to then do the phenomena. Okay. Uh, what is photoplasm? So photoplasm is purely energy based. So whereas ectoplasm is an extension of the medium's nervous system, photoplasm is purely energy based. So it's taken from energy from the room, the sitters, um, different environments on earth. Um, what is the benefit for people experiencing physical phenomena? Um, so where is a mental medium? I may go, I've got your mother here. I feel that her name may have been this or that. With physical mediumship, if the conditions are right, she could in theory come through and actually speak for herself. So you can hear it to your mum, you can feel it to your mum, she knows things that only your mum would know. Um, and you're cutting out that middleman. And it's like direct link, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, if the energy's right, then it, yeah, it, it's, it, you've not got someone interpreting what they think your mother's saying. Okay. Why is red light uh, important to be used? Uh, so the reason we use things like red light rather than white light is basically light disperses energy. Um, white light disperses it the quickest, so because of the wavelength of red light or blue light, um, phenomena can build without that energy being dispersed as quickly. Okay. Um, why do you use a cabinet? Um, so a cabinet, the trance cabinets we call it, and they're all different types, um, it's basically an area for energy to build. So that spirit can build that energy towards the phenomena. Also, especially if you're working with ectoplasm and the ectoplasm is out in the room, um, the majority of it, that sensitive ectoplasm, is still safely protected inside the cabinet. Okay. What was your first physical phenomena? Oh, um, probably the first thing I came across was probably table tipping. Okay. Um, seeing a table move around the room, knock and bang. Uh, that was probably my first experience of, of physical phenomena. Okay. How long does it take you to go into trance? 
and how do you do it? Um, so for me, it takes me probably about five minutes or so to go into the trance state. Um, depending who I'm working with, whether it's Abraham or Jimmy, who's my physical team, um, would be different how I go into the trance state. But normally I would set the intention um, and then I, I'm looking for signals in my body to then tell me it, it's time to close my eyes, relax and kind of go. Okay. What signals do you get in your body? Uh, so with Abraham, I would start to feel the pressure on my chest. Uh, I start to feel a kind of spinning sensation and then when he would tell me to stop talking I would close my eyes and I would start putting colors together and that would be my signal to my brain to go um, whereas with the physical it's more about triggers so okay. I can kind of feel myself going more into that kind of sleep-like state as time goes on. Okay. What is the purpose of uh, sitters during a seance? Uh, so sitters um, as well as being there to experience the phenomena, they provide the energy necessary. So you can have a fantastic medium, but if they haven't got good sitters or good energy, um, then no phenomena is going to be produced. Okay. Um, why are seances uh, done in control conditions? Um, so they're mainly done for the safety of the medium, especially if ectoplasm is being used. Um, but also the, the energy is so, so many things can influence or affect the energy. We want to create the perfect harmony for spirit to achieve what they want to achieve without the mind of the sitters or anything else interfering with it. Um, are people allowed to be anything into, in the seance with them? Um, so in my seances we let people in with as little as possible. Um, one, so that we can't get accused afterwards of planting something, yeah. but also if people are bringing things into the seance room, they're going to, like tissue, then they're going to be encouraged to use them and we want them to be sitting still and yeah. contributing. So we try and limit what they bring in. Okay. Um, can anyone become a medium or physical medium? I believe so. Everything, I believe everyone has the potential. Um, with ectoplasmic mediums, you do need to be born with that potential to produce an abundance. Um, but with photoplasm that can do everything that ectoplasm can, um, anyone can work with that. How do you know when you have spirits around you? Um, so you should be able to feel their energy. You should be able to feel their personality. Um, I always use table tip as an example. Um, rather than just feeling like a table moving around the room, you should be able to feel that personality behind it. Okay. Cool. Do spirit guides want something in return? Um, I think they're learning as much as we are. Um, I, I'd say some of them probably owe us a karmic bond or an energetic bond, so their way of paying it off to us is to be a guide and a helper. Um, so I think their, their highest goal is to help us achieve what we've set out to achieve, and um, I think that's what they get out of it. Right. So yeah, I've been in a few of your uh, seances and uh, healing uh, seances and really enjoyed it, and uh, a lot of you know, great feedback from people. Um, it's important that what we do here as well uh, well, all, all of them is that everyone's checked properly. So this is something that probably is on people's minds when they go in that all oh, the medium is hiding things in their pockets yeah. and what we do here as you know is that we metal detect people, um, same sex onto same person, um, patting people down, making sure there's no, nothing in pockets and also you yourself are checked as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it, as well as being in the cabinet, what, what is the purpose of being like a cable tied down and, and... So a lot of people think the whole point of a medium being tied up in a, in a cabinet is to exclude fraud, but actually it's for the medium's protection. Yeah. So if they're working with ectoplasm, the body will either try to replicate what spirit's doing in the room or is likely to spasm. Um, so the evidence itself should come from the phenomena. It's not about trying to subdue the medium so they can't get out because even if you're cable tied, if spirit wants to take the medium out of the cabinet, they'll happily do so. Yeah, and I've witnessed that as well. And then straight after the, the end of the seance, um, you're back in the cabinet again, which is quite interesting. So that, that for me as a sitter has been quite evidential that, okay, the medium's being checked, everyone else is being checked, there's no hidden props or anything like that. Yeah. And you do a great introduction before people go into the seance. Thank you. Yeah, we try and, and uh, we try and make sure that everyone's happy. Um, and, you know, I've always encouraged if anyone ever has questions to ask, um, don't be shy to check the room afterwards to to check us afterwards if, if you want to. Um, yeah, we try and make sure that everyone is comfortable and happy so that they're going to give harmony rather than sitting there and not enjoying it. Right. Well, thank you for your time and the questions and answers. And uh, if you want to know more, just uh, look at the link down below and you can uh, get more information about Gary. So thank you very much.